All right. Hey, you. Why are you playing on your phone? Don't look anywhere else. I'm talking to you. Put your phone away. Yes, you. Put your phone away. So inappropriate, God. <laughs> and people at the back, can't you see there are like so many empty s- seats here? Why are you guys sitting at the back? Can you see from there? Jeez. You guys are not even moving after I said it. All right. As a quick demonstration of being a really harsh teacher on giving really unreasonable instructions to students who have no idea what's going on. (laughs) I can sense the little confusion you guys are having over there, and which shows why communication is really important in our current society, especially between teachers and students. So back in the 1800s, when formal schools first became a thing, such as the Victorian schools, Punishments such as the iron cane, the, 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 the dunce cap, and the baskets of hanging children in midair will all occurred commonly when students are misbehaving during classes. As one century flies, um, teachers are definitely becoming better, but still not yet what we students today expected. Te- um, I've interviewed people from 1950s and 1960s and they responded as they have to wake up 4 or 5 in the morning and go home at 9 or 10 in the evening, which is really stressful and tiring for kids at our age. Yeah, life was tough. And here's the thing. Even though such things are happening, nobody stood up and said anything. Why? Because teenagers didn't exist at that time. Um, people at our age were still considered as kids. And what kids said are not value. The adults will just be like, yeah, whatever. And so, if, if you think what I said sounded really absurd, now let's move on to 2013, which is only six years ago. That's me in grade three, by the way. And, yeah, I was a nice kid, and a great one. <laughs> but for some reason, I forgot to do my homework, which is really sad. And I, ha- I was forced to go to the teacher's office for the next entire lesson to finish my homework. And guess what happened after I finished it? I didn't receive a congratulations hug. What I got was like a book that hit straight on my head and it, was, and, it, and, it, and it hit me so hard that for a second I saw the future. <laughs> and teachers today are definitely improving much, much better than the past. In the four schools in two different countries that I have been to, I have mainly categorized teachers into three major types. The first type is this mean guy, the harsh type. What he does is that he gives you tons of homework to do, and it makes your brain burn out. And before you can even realize, there's going to be tests and quizzes and all the assignments flying right at your face. And if you fail any one of those, well, that guy's going to have a great time talking to your parents about your grade. (laughs) And the second type is the don't... And the second type is the don't really care type. Well, this guy is almost the opposite as the first one, that he gives very less homework. For students who don't really like to study, this is their best buddy. Like, they invite him to a dinner party 24-7 any day. And, but for students who really want to achieve in better grades in their career, they rather prefer the first guy because they're actually effective teaching but not necessarily effective communicating. And here's the third type, which is what I call the somewhere in between type. And this guy is generally giving students opportunities to express themselves during classes. And they feel responsible for the students by giving them assignments to do in class and at home. But it won't like take you hours a day to do every day, which is not good. And in my perspective, this is the ideal teacher to have in 2019 for students. Yeah, see? That guy right there. And here's, a, here's another story about another homework story. Well, that, this happened in my current school, which is NIS, a great school, by the way. And I forgot to do my homework again. But trust me, I'm a great student. Well, the thing is, I was having fun during national holiday with my buddy Jonathan at McCall. And after 
after this holiday, I received, the, I received the email from my teacher saying, Thomas, where's your homework that was due days ago? And I, I, I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. I, and then I sent it, my report in with the email, and guess what happened? Boom, nothing. <laughs> Case closed. Simple, straightforward. As, as, and as time passed, um, uh, this, uh, people are improving and they are thinking differently, especially for the teenagers. They have critical thinking skills, they're open-minded, and as I showed you, the exact same case can be solved completely, can be solved and resulted completely differently depending on um, how effective they're communicating. With effective communicators, problems can be solved very easily and very simple, like nothing bad's gonna happen. But for ineffective communicators, they not only have to go through a book hitting process, but also they may end up with a lot of un unnecessary issues to deal after, which is not what people want. And I'm pretty sure now you can tell that communication is a big part in our current society and it is a very important skill to have, not only in school, but also in your families and other places. And remember, it's key. You see the word that I didn't say? That's, you, that's what you've got to work on. Thanks for listening. <laughs>